To conclude, tests with CX4 indicate that we have developed a nerve gas so deadly that one milligram in contact with the skin causes death by paralysis of the nerve centers starting with the larynx in less than 20 seconds. It is colorless. Yes? Your alarm call at 7 o'clock. I didn't order any alarm call. This is my private line. Who? Yes, yes. Welcome to another Who Done It, and to the death of an actor who was so good that even when being murdered, he wouldn't give the name of his agent away. <laughs> and welcome to our guest celebrity panel, who are here with me in this top secret research uh, this top secret research establishment to solve the dastardly murder we've just seen. So first, our resident panel, that brilliant bloodhound, Patrick Mower. <laughs> and there, as you could just see, holding his leash, the lovely Anushka Hempel. And our guests, the lovely liver bird herself, Polly James. <laughs> With, uh, don't ask me, but tonight we probably will, Dr. Magnus Pike. <laughs> and of course, four members of our studio audience who were picked just before the show started to make their choice of who done it. And there they are. Now, as you may have guessed, it was the deadly CX-4 on the earpiece of the phone that killed Dr. Manson. So try not to chew on your pencil, because we need you to listen to the cross-examination of Major Denton, the top security officer, who's conducting the investigation. And you at home, don't forget that the murderer is allowed to lie. So when you see a flashback in time, the event may not have happened at all, and not quite the way it's described. Now, amongst the red herrings are the real clues. In fact, you've already seen two. Now, what were they? Let's go back to the plot and find out. Oh, this is Mrs. Wood, Major Denton. She operates a switchboard, sir. Oh, thank you, thanks. Well, you all know what's happened, <coughs> so let's look at the facts. Now, we know from the tape a call came through on Manson's private line. Traces of the chemical CX-4 were found on the earpiece. Now, Manson is already dying and tries to tell us on the tape recording who killed him. He can't speak, so what does he do? He removes this ring and puts it in this matchbox. His last act is to leave us the only clue we have as to who the agent is. So you are saying that one of us is a spy infiltrated to kill Manson, but what would they gain by his death? Better to steal a formula than kill the goose. The goose was already passing secrets on. Luckily, we intercepted the information and Manson was willing to do a deal with us. Obviously, you'd like to know what we were all doing between the time the last person saw Manson alive and his death at 7 o'clock. You've been watching Charlie Chan. Who? Uh, the famous Chinese det Oh, of course, before your time, sir. I must have been the last person. I left Dr. Manson's office at 10 to 7. Uh, we only have your word for that, Miss Burns. It was a quite but let's assume it's the truth. Well, of course it is. Oh, clairvoyant, are you, sir? Now, let's look at it this way. If someone entered the office, it was someone known to Manson. Easy to distract him, contaminate the earpiece, leave, and be somewhere else at seven when the call arrives. Well, why so elaborate? Why not just kill him on the spot? <laughs> just as someone else walks in for a friendly chat, or you'd make a lousy murderer, sir, or is that the impression you're trying to create? I suppose, Miss Burns, when you left the office, you went back to your room? Yes, I did. It's only a couple of minutes away. Yes, I can verify that. How fortunate, Mr. Victor. I had invited Simon to watch my television. He doesn't have one. He was there when I arrived. About what time was that? Five to seven. 
But you left the office about ten to seven. What took you five minutes if you're only two minutes away? I popped into Mrs. Woods to get some change for my gas meter. I have a gas fire. It's a cold place. Yes, uh, I changed a pound for her. <laughs> and what were you doing, Professor Stryker, at somewhere between ten, two and seven? I was giving Dr. Ling a fencing lesson. It's a splendid way of keeping fit. Everybody's become very keen on the sport. Miss Burns there was a fencing blue at university. So you two were in here, I see. I suppose Miss Burns didn't make a call on the private line when she came for her change. No, 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 certainly not, sir. No, no, no. Well, that leaves the call box near the gate. And you didn't see anybody there, did you, Shanks? Well, sir, I did see Dr. Ling. Well, fencing round the gate, was he? That was not until after seven. How are you so sure? Because I dropped my watch just before I went outside. Convenient. Look, we just finished the 15-minute practice session, and I was very, very hot and sweaty. good at this. Oh, for a beginner, you're excellent. Oh, looks like rain. I've left the bike out. Motor bicycles at your age. You really must be out of your head. <laughs> Apart from this, it's the only excitement I get around here. <laughs> oh. Still going. Just on seven. Oh, it only seems a moment since we started. Hey, no rest for you. Here's your next customer. <laughs> And then I went to put my motorbike away. I'd push it in if I were you, sir. They don't machines these much, less, sir. They don't make them like this anymore. No. It's your daughter's big night tonight, isn't it, Shanks? Oh, yes, sir. That's right, sir. She's dancing at Covent Garden, sir. You must be very proud. Oh, I am, sir. I've just been on the phone to wish her good luck and all that. She'll be a great ballerina one of these days. Welcome back to Who Done It. And to quickly recap, Dr. Manson, head of a secret research establishment, received a phone call. And instead of the line going dead, he did. Due to a deadly poison being applied to the earpiece on the phone. Now, the only clue so far appeared to be a matchbox in which the dying Dr. Manson placed a ring from the little finger of his left hand. Now, among the suspects are Professor Stryker, a striker, as in matchbox. <laughs> Miss Burns, which matches generally do. Mr. Simon Victor, whose initial, initials match those of the matchmakers. Mrs. Woods, the telephonist. Phones, ring, wood, wooden matches, could be a clue. And confusingly enough, we have a Chinese called Ling, who has a matchless motorbike. Now, let me make one thing Major Denim said clear. Dr. Manson was a spy and was prepared to name his co-agent to lessen the penalty that he would have incurred. And that's why he was silenced. Now, having helped you so much, let's rejoin Major Denton, who is concluding his questions to Shanks, the security guard. And by the way, a shank is part of a ring. Shanks, you can confirm the time you met Dr. Ling by his motorbike. Well, I didn't look at my watch, sir, but I think it was round about seven, sir. Uh, now, to recap on your movements, Miss Burns, uh, you meet Simon Victor in your room? Yes, I was just leaving for fencing practice. And what did you do then, Miss Burns? I fed the meter, put the fire on to warm the room, made a cup of coffee, changed into my fencing gear, and then ran across to watch Simon practicing with Professor Stryker. But that was well after seven. And can you vouch for the fact that uh, you were practicing with Mr. Victor according to Dr. Ling's watch from seven onwards? Yes, but the alarm call was made at seven o'clock, so any minutes after are immaterial. Just because a voice says it's seven, it doesn't mean it is, does it? Now, can you vouch for Mr. Victor? Well, let me think. Well, to be fair, Mr. Victor did leave the room, but not long enough to get to Manson's phone and back again. Tell me about it. Well, we just started, and, uh, well, obviously, no, Mr. Victor... No, 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 Sam, you must get that guard up faster. Otherwise, I can go there and there. Yes, I know. It's this jacket. It's, I don't know, it's too tight. Listen, I'm going to change it for another. I won't be a minute. Oh. <laughs> Oh. <clears throat> now. Oh. oh, come on.
come on, Simon, what are you doing? Miss Burns will be over to give me a lesson soon. Oh. Now, Samuel, remember, this time, concentrate. Speed, timing, look for your target, think ahead and get that sense of point, right? Want a test? Good. Oh, much better. Oh, well, the jacket certainly made a difference. Well, as I say, we practiced for yes. quite some time. Oh, one more. Yes! Oh, 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 very good. Yes! Oh! Oh! No, 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 that's enough for me. Oh, no, that's very, very much better, Simon. Me. You look even more tired than Simon. Come, Dr. Stryker. Don't let old age get you down. Oh, oh. Well, by the time we'd finished, it must have been about half past seven, and quite frankly, I'd had enough, so... We decided to call it a day and return to our quarters, and the rest you know. I think that accounts for everyone's time, except Shags. Sir? That motorbike shed, it's a long way from the gate. What were you doing there? Well, I'd been up to see Mrs. Wood, sir, and I wanted to use her telephone. Well, she was making a cup of tea when I got there, sir, so I... Well, I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Shanks. I'm afraid I can't allow you to use the phone. You see, I have to account for it. Well, I'll pay. Look. This was taken during rehearsals. There she is at the end. Oh, she's a baby swan. Isn't that pretty? Oh, she's much prettier than the others. <laughs> well, I only wanted to uh, say good luck, you know. Oh, very well. Go ahead. Thank you, Mrs. Wood. <laughs> Minister of Defence, can I help you? Well, I'm not sure. He may have already left his office, but I'll put you through and you can try. Oh, sorry, my mistake. Oh, ever since they went on to computers, every other number's a wrong one, even when you get the right one. Yeah. And you still have to pay, you know, they charge you. Really? Time and time again, I've had to get through to the operator and ask to be credited, because I have to account for it. Oh, Miss Shanks, please, it's her uh, dad. You can hear the music, isn't it? Oh, there's that. Oh, hello, Vicky. Good luck, love. I know you're going to be great. Oh, I'm ever so nervous. Oh, don't be. I'll be thinking of you. Good luck, love. I've got to go, Dad. Bye. Bye-bye, love. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Wood. You're welcome, sir. It was my fault. I should never have let him use that phone. Obviously, somebody must have slipped through the gate and used the telephone kiosk whilst I was up with Mrs. Wood, sir. But who? We've all accounted for ourselves. Surely we've overlooked one thing. The call on that tape sounded like a woman's voice. But I hadn't overlooked it. These clues together tell me all I need to know. You mean you know who the murderer is? Oh, yes. It's what Charlie Chan would call an open and shut case. <laughs> Oh, I don't know about the case, but I've noticed some open and shut mouths in our panel while they were watching that. So while they recover, let us welcome our suspects. And here they are. Uh, may I remind you that all the suspects may accidentally give away a national defence secret. So if there are any Reds watching, will you please get back under your beds? Now, panel, before you cross-examine our suspects, you are allowed to ask for an instant replay of any of the action that you've seen so far. So, let us start with you, Polly. Polly James, what would you like to see again? Ah, well, uh, can I see um, the bit where Dr Ling drops his watch in the fencing lesson? Uh, Dr please. Ling drops his watch during the fencing lesson. Mm. Yes, of course. Uh, Dr Magnus Pike, what would you uh, like to see? Again? I'd like to see a bit where uh, those two, Miss Burns and Simon Victor, are sort of sitting being interrogated by Major um, uh, Thingamibob. That's a bit I'd like to see. Major Thingamibob. Um, uh, Major uh, Denton, I think. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Doctor. Anushka, what would you like to see again? Yes, I'd like to see the bit where Mrs Woods lets the security man make the phone call. 
Uh, Mrs. Woods. The security man make the phone call, right? Patrick. Why do you want that? Well, why shouldn't she have that? I want to see uh, the fencing bit with uh, Simon Victor and uh, the master fencer um, before uh, Simon leaves the room, please. Right. Good. Right, well, while we find those, let's have one question each from you. May I remind you, only the guilty party is allowed to lie, and probably will. Polly? Yes. A question from you, please. One yes. question. Yes. Dr Ling, please. Um, could you tell me, please, what kind of a watch you wear, and um, where do you keep it uh, inside your fencing gear? You mean what the brand name is? Well, yes, what kind of, yes, what kind of a it's watch? It's a Timex. <laughs> we allow no advertising on commercial television, Doctor. A wristwatch? A, a, a wristwatch, wrist yes, yes. Yes, and where, where, where do you keep it inside all that fencing gear? Well, there's a pocket uh -huh. on the left-hand side of my fencing trousers. Mm. And that, when I fence, that is where I put it. And you're not afraid that it might get... <laughs> no, because I am right, I'm right-handed. Right I'm right-handed, well, and when so I fence, he. my right-hand side is facing him. Yes. I so see. that's why I put it in the left hand. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm. So unless, somebody <laughs> unless somebody stabs him in the rear, his watch is safe anyway. What's that? Doctor, a question. Uh, well, I'd like to have a sort of a de demonstration, if I might. Could I ask Miss Burns and Mr. Victor if they'd be good enough to stand up and stand back to back? Were they allowed to do that? Yes, of course they're allowed to do yeah, anything yes. you ask them to do. Would you please stand up, Dr. Victor yes. and Ms. Burns, and stand back to back? Yes, that... Oh, wow. Back to back, yes. yes. Right. Is that being shot beautifully? Yes. Y yes, thank you. That's what I wanted to know. Now, could I ask Miss Burns a supplement... Oh, thank you. Thank you, gen gentlemen. Please, I mean, ladies sir. and gentlemen. Could I ask a supplementary, Miss Burns? You seem very friendly with Mr. Uh, Victor. Uh, indeed I am, yes. Are you engaged? Well, we haven't announced it officially, but we are, actually. And tell me, have you ever been engaged before? No, I haven't. Uh, you, have you ever had a close relationship before? <laughs> yes, but I've never been engaged. Before. Well, well, was that close relationship with Dr. Manson, the fellow who uh, with the yes? Indeed, it was not. You never gave him a piece of jewellery, for example. No, indeed, I didn't. Oh, that's disappointing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good, I'm so. She telling the truth. <laughs> well, I don't know, sir. If she's responsible for the crime, she could be lying, as I told you. Uh? Right, Anushka, a question, please. Yes, I'd like to ask Professor Stryker. Um, what what do you do when you're not giving fencing lessons? <coughs> What bit of the organisation are you? I'm sorry, but owing to the Official Secrets Act, I can't really give you <laughs> precise details. <laughs> well, I'm... But I'm en enga engaged on research. You are? Hmm. All right, thank you very much. And I'd like to ask um, Major Denton something now. Um, is it usual to carry on an investigation within the, the firm instead of calling the police from outside to do this? Well, what are you trying to do? Do be out of a job. You ought to hire a dog and bark yourself. Well, have you let the Do you mean to say yet? that at every time that something went wrong, I'm supposed to telephone the police? In that case, all we need is somebody who, not, uh, who can use the telephone. No, my job. Don't forget that this is a highly secret place. And my job is to make sure that I can possibly deal with everything with the services that I have at my disposal. If it got out of hand, I would then contact my superior department, which I can't tell you what it is, except it is part of the Defence Ministry, and ask their advice. Then we might bring in the police, the army, who knows. Thank you very much indeed. Would you continue you? your explanation in part two? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Patrick, a question. Uh, well, I was going to ask uh, Mr... Is it Professor Denton? A question. Um, what is no, that on your... Professor Denton. Major, sir. Ex major. Ex-army. Sorry. Mm. sorry. Mm. Uh, what, what is that you have on your tie? Oh, careless. No, the, um... <laughs> 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 the little uh, in, uh, emblem. The oh, emblem. the little emblem. Uh, well, it's SV, which is the... Is that um, anything to do with Sergeant, a, a... Uh, Semper Victor. Is that a, anything to do with a Cambridge... It's a service club. And, uh, Semper, Semper it's Victor not a Cambridge University uh, always one trust up. of any kind. It's not a university time. No, it's no. a service You club. wouldn't happen to have been there with the sort of super spy Kim Philby at all, would you? Philby? Well... <laughs> First of all, I wasn't at Cambridge, and when Philby was at Cambridge, I think I was at kindergarten at Chichester. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I believe he did a few lectures there anyway, sir. <laughs> right, we're now ready for the first playback. It is Dr. Magnus Pikes. He wanted to see Mr. Simon Victor and Miss Burns being interrogated. That's when they had a disagreement over the time that he was in her room watching TV. 
that the impression you're trying to create? I suppose, Miss Burns, when you left the office, you went back to your room? Yes, I did. It's only a couple of minutes away. Yes, I can verify that. How unfortunate, Mr. Victor. I had invited Simon to watch my television. He doesn't have one. He was there when I arrived. About what time was that? Five to seven. But you left the office about ten to seven. What took you five minutes if you're only two minutes away? I popped in. How about that, Doctor? It's terribly confusing, isn't it? Because in a couple of shakes, they were playing uh, fencing. They couldn't have much. They're, they're very fast movies. A very short program. <laughs> uh, Is there any questions you'd like to ask? Mm, I'm suspicious of that, Miss Burns. I wouldn't like her to know it, but I, I, there's something <laughs> funny about you it. You carry on and be suspicious, Doctor. You carry on. If you want to ask her a question and pin it to the wall, you do so. Carry right on. What would you like to ask her? Uh, well, I'd, I'd like to change, sort of change my gear a little bit and, and, and ask Major Denton how many of these chaps had got this gas stuff that goes through people's ears. Funny thing about this ear business, you know. I, I don't mean that. I mean about the, the, the poison going... Because in rabbits it goes through their ears. And you remember Shakespeare, what does? Uh, Hamlet's father, they stuck it down his ear hole. But how many people had this stuff that you could put it on telephones? Did this fellow have any? Uh, well, I'm afraid that is not a, a question that I can answer. It, it's a highly secret uh, thing. I mean, obviously, Manson himself, uh, presumably Professor Stryker, would be in touch with it. And... In touch with it is a bad piece of phrase. <laughs> yes, it is indeed, isn't it? Good. Thank you very much indeed. Yes, Patrick, you are waving there. You uh, have a yes, I'd like to ask um, Simon uh, Victor a question. I agree with uh, Dr. Pike. The very strange um, behaviour, them two nipping out uh, a very short programme, as he said, that they watch. Um, how good a fencer is uh, Mr. Stryker? Is he very good? Mr. Stryker, good? he's quite good. I mean, Miss Burns has been teaching him. You know, do you think that when you left to do your changing, he in fact said that there wasn't time enough for you to go and uh, in, in to interfere with Mr. Manson's uh, telephone, but do you think that there was time when, he, when you were out of the room for him to go and do it, to reach that office? No, because the only way out was through that, through that door and I was changing outside. Mm. Do you think he's a good enough fencer to have fished the watch off of uh, Mr. Ling's wrist to establish an alibi for himself because he knew that Mr. Ling would look at the watch? Mr. Ling said he dropped the watch when he took yes, it out of his pocket. But is it not possible that he might have done a, whatever they're called, um, a thing and fished it off? I don't think he's that good. You don't think <laughs> he's that good? <laughs> Thank you. Then I must stop you. We're now ready for the second playback. The second playback is for Polly James. Polly? Uh, your playback is coming up now, and you can see again where Dr. Ling drops his watch and notices the time. Watch too, Patrick. You really must be out of your head. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from this, it's the only excitement I get around here. <laughs> oh. Still going. Just on seven. Oh, it only seems a moment since we started. Hey, no rest for you. Here's your next customer. <laughs> yes, Polly? Oh, you look so happy and pleased about that. <laughs> Not at all. It hasn't helped me at all. But it was fun watching it, though, wasn't yes. it? Yes. Oh, yes, I liked seeing it. Well, Pat, um, you probably enjoyed watching it. It was good. I like well, that, yes. Um, can, can I ask yes, of course. this Miss Burns a question, please? Because I quite agree, she's very suspicious. Miss <laughs> um, Burns. Burns, Burns. Scottish? Scottish descent? No, actually. I, I did once think of making, making a parachute jump over the Highlands, but apart from that, nothing. Miss <laughs> 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 Burns. Miss um, Burns. Miss <laughs> um, Burns, what bust size are you? <laughs> I do sincerely hope that's a relevant <laughs> question. I don't, I don't think it's at all relevant. Oh, it's completely. Are you I'm afraid I must ask you to answer the question? It you might be relevant. Yes, you see, please Pat, silence yes, in the court, please. My bust size is 34 Can inches. I that? That is. <laughs> Not just at the moment. I don't think Mr. Victor would like it. 34? <laughs> yes, inches, not centimetres. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes. Um, can I ask Mr. Ling? Some yes, of course. Please, please carry on, Patrick. Uh, Mr. Ling. <clears throat> Um, when you came out with your motorbike, you started it up. Where were you going to go? First of all, I'm not Mr. Ling, I am Dr. Dr. Ling, I'm terribly sorry. That's right, you stand up for it. I'm <laughs> Dr. Ling. <laughs> you started the bike, and yet you only had a few yards to, to wheel it. it. I kicked the starter, yes. but the bike did not start. You intended to start it. I intended to start it. Yes. Why? I mean, you only had a few yards to move it into That's the... Right. 
I like riding motorcycles. Because you're lazy. Even for a few yards. Yeah. <laughs> also, I mean, it might be relevant, but uh, is it not being terribly unpatriotic to ride a matchless motorbike? I'd have thought you'd have had a Suzuki or something. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, Mr. Moa, I am Chinese. A Suzuki is a Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stop him in oh, full blood. <laughs> <laughs> Is your Go attack on. over or not? <laughs> Be careful. Yes, about please. Him. Yes, Anusha. Well, I want to know whether you're Japanese or Chinese, it all adds up to the same thing, that you're a foreigner. Right? <laughs> to you, it adds up to the same thing. Yes, to me, no. all right. For, for now, it adds up to the same thing. So I'd like to know where were you born? Uh, Warrington in Lancashire. <laughs> But Warrington vodka and all that sort of things, uh. all red. China, Russia? Uh, that, you, I think you're getting your nationality slightly confused. Vodka is a Russian drink, not a Chinese drink. Have you ever tried it? Yes. <laughs> In fact, do you drink very often? When I get the opportunity. I see. Thank you so much. Yes. Right? Um, Doctor, have you a question to ask? Well, I wanted to ask Professor, Str uh, <coughs> Professor Stryker a question. Um, Miss Burns is a jolly good fencer, is she not? <laughs> Who's the next best in this whole brigade in, in the laboratory research department? Well, with all due modesty, I think I'm about the second. Yeah, but among the rest of the people, is there, are there anyone any, anywhere near as good as Miss Burns? I would Because have... Mr Thing at the end there, he's a pretty well a duffer, isn't he? You were, uh, had him all over the shop. No, I, I think really when he's relaxed, he, he's quite good. But there are times, I have noticed, when he gets tense, he loses his sense of direction. You've noticed that his before, this, goes. before this particular fencing do? Yes, indeed, yes. You had, had you? Yes. Oh. Certain tension. And when he's untense, he's quite good? Indeed, very good, yes. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Right, we're ready for the next VTR. Uh, Patrick? is yours. You asked to see again the bit where Simon Victor <coughs> complained of tightness under the arms and went to change his fencing jacket. No, 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 no. Sam, you must get that guard up faster. Otherwise, I can go there and there. Yes, I know. It's this jacket. It's, I don't know, it's too tight. Listen, I'm going to change it for another. I won't be a minute. Oh. Yeah. Yes? Yes. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Doctor? Dr. Victor? Mr. Victor. Um, when you went and changed your jacket in a dressing room? Well, yes, it's, the dress it's a squash court, in fact. It's just the dressing rooms are just outside. Yes. Um, and yet your girlfriend, Miss Burns, said that she went to her room to change into um, her gear. Can yes. I? Well, the men usually change in the changing room, and... Miss Burns changes in her room. I see. Does that always happen? Yes. In well, fact, so I've got. In fact, you made a mistake, did you, uh, Mr. Victor, by uh, choosing the wrong jacket? Yes. All the men's jackets are hanging up in the in the. And the only special one is is um, what is your chest measurement? Thirty-eight, forty. But the jacket you put on was a bit small. Yes, it was. I don't know why I picked that one. I think it, I don't know whose it was. We've got, we've got quite a few out there. Yes, there are smaller men, are there, around? Yes, in, yes. The, in the establishment, yes. Yeah. Well, very good. We've got good news. They're all getting a lot of nice new jackets next week. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm, I'm stopping you. I'm sorry for a minute because we're now ready for Anushka's playback. Uh, she asked to see the bit where the security guard made a phone call from Mrs. Wood's office, or from the, the tele telephone office, uh, to his daughter, the dancer. <coughs> Well, I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Shanks. I'm afraid I can't allow you to use the phone. You see, I have to account for it. Well, I'll pay. Look, this was taken during rehearsals. There she is at the end. Oh, she's a baby well, swan. Isn't that pretty? Oh, she's much prettier than the others. Well, I only wanted to uh, say good luck, you know. Yeah? Any questions? Um, yes, I missed a bit before that. I think Mrs. Wood's... Uh, may I ask Mrs. Yes, Wood something? Course. Mrs. Woods, had you taken a phone call on the switchboard just prior to that playback that we saw then that was a wrong number or something? What exactly was it? 
No, I hadn't taken a call. I'd just come down with my cup of tea and sat down, ready to listen in for incoming calls. Yes. But you did mention at some stage of the game that um, all these calls, they're sort of going all wrong and you can't get a right number and this, that and the other. Well, at um, some stage, uh, Yes, that is when they went on to computers. Computers never behave properly and every other number seemed to be a wrong one. I said that to uh. him. Was that, because, was that because you got a, um, didn't shank, so you got a wrong number first, did you? Yes. Yes. Mm. So, uh, then you were referring to that, were you? Mm. Yes. Could I ask yes. Mr. Shanks a question? You. Yes, please. Um, when you were on, actually on the phone, could you hear what uh, Mrs. Woods, Wood was saying? Did, were you aware of the dialogue? Not really, no. Uh, so in when fact, I was waiting for um, the, the person to answer the other side of the When phone, she was re recounting the, yes. the action, she could in fact have been lying, and she, she might she have made? Could have been. It's possible that she made a call, do you think? It's possible. Last question, please, yes, Dr. Mr. Yes, Inushka. Mr. Shanks, um, you sort of flashed a, a photograph around of, of um, somebody which was your daughter in that photograph yes. as a baby swan. Yes. Um, do you know the name of a baby swan at all? Do I know a name? The name of a baby swan? Yes. I can't uh, actually really remember Fred. at the moment. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do with... Um, right, there I must stop you. Uh, the time is now up. The panel, I want you to write down who done it and any clues that you have spotted. Yes. Oh. Right. This applies to our audience panel as well. And don't worry, even if you're not sure, just have a pot shot at it. Right. Time is now up. I'm going to collect the cards. Thank you, Polly. Hmm. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> Anushka? Don't try to <laughs> Yes. All right, Mush, let's have it. I've done it again, I'm deaf. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, before I ask the panel who did it, let's see if we have a winner from the studio audience. No. No. Yes, we have a winner here. Uh, plus one clue. And we have another winner, but no clue. The no clue, that was uh, Stephen Weintraub. He got the answer right, but not with the clues. The correct answer, therefore, is Denise Allison. Congratulations, Denise Allison. Uh, Denise, you, you win this beautiful whodunit trophy, which I shall be happy to give to you later after the show, all right? Well done. Now, here is the big moment. Apollo James, will you now kindly tell us who done it and your clues as to why you think they done it? Uh, yes, yes, I, I, I'm, I'm throwing caution to the wind. Go uh, on. Plus all my clues, and I'm going on a hunch. Um, it's Shanks. Shanks? Because that's a bogus phone call. Um, if his daughter is a baby swan, then at that point, which is a signet, <coughs> then at that point, she would be on stage. At that point in the music, and it was pointed out that we could hear the music, at that point in the music of that particular off, um, ballet, she would have been on, she'd had to be on stage, so she couldn't have been talking to you. And the man left his ring, uh, which was meant to point to his name, Shank. Right. Thank you very much. Now I'm going to swing to the other end, to Patrick Mower. Ah, well, what I'm do you think, Patrick? I'm surprise you all. I've been doing a bit of lateral thinking. And, um... Yeah. Uh, sw <laughs> <laughs> swan... Uh, the thing is, the Swan Vesta's pack and the ring, of course, so it's the SV. And I've worked this out, you see. If it's Vesta, Vesta Tilly, Tiller, is a gardener, right? Someone who works in a garden. The ring and... Uh, so I want something that goes round in a garden. That's a mower. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah, seriously, right. seriously, seriously. Seriously, it could it? be Why? it could be Mr. Ling because Matchless motorbike and uh, Matchless and Tinger Ling ring. It could be Denton. He had SV on his tie. It could be Simon Victor um, SV, the initials. But in fact, it wasn't. It was Mr. Shanks and persons or persons unknown because, uh, he, of, as Polly said, it's uh, a signet ring and he, she was in the Swan Lake thing. And what was the other clue? When the phone call was uh, a, a signal. Thank you very much. Anushka, who done it and why? Well, um, there's been an awful lot of swanning about between these two, and I think it's uh, Mr. Shanks as well. Because I, um, wh he made a remark that he, when he said he made a phone call, that the, the call was probably made from his box. 
Right, and when the phone call came through, the alarm call had come through, there weren't any pips on that um, alarm call that came through to Mr. Manson. Also, I go back to the um, off-stage call, can't come through, and this and that and the other. The um, signet ring in the box with Swan Vesta written on it, Swan Lake, your daughter being a signet. Um, Thank you very much. Swan, my swan, sorry. Thank you, Lushka. <laughs> yes, Dr. Magnus Pike. Somebody must be wrong, and I think it's me. <laughs> because... <laughs> I think it's that chap Victor. I never liked the look of him because I believe when he went out with his thing too tight under his arms, I think it was Miss Burns who came back in because she fenced so well and he went off and slaughtered the fellow while and so on. And there was a clap of thunder when he was, when he was uh, out murdering it and there was a clap of thunder, wasn't there? You know, the beginning of the whole show? Yes. That, that's, a, that's a clue and uh, yes. Very interesting. Yes. Thank you very much indeed, Doctor. No, any yes. You <laughs> You'll never get another chance. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Will the real whodunit stand up, please? <laughs> yeah. Aha! <laughs> yes, the security guard, Mr. Shanks. Well, congratulations, Polly, Anushka, and Patrick. All three of you got it right this week. Splendid. Well done, Anushka. It's your first win. Well, it is. It's it? about time. Uh, my commiserations, uh, Dr. Magnus Pike. It was a very badly run lab. You should have locked up that <laughs> stuff. <laughs> well, any of the other suspects, of course, could have been the murderer. And only the clue of the signet ring and the matchbox together appointed to Shanks the security guard. So let's see how he did it. Well, as Denton correctly suggested, Shanks entered Manson's office, got Manson to go to the filing cabinet whilst he impregnated the earpiece on the phone protected by his gloves. Later, Shanks called a wrong number deliberately, and this signaled the person at the other end to make the call to Manson. Did you spot when Shanks gave himself away? He showed a photo of his daughter in ballet costume, dressed as a signet. And over the phone, the ballet music was Swan Lake, a signet ring, and Swan Vesta matches were the clues that Manson improvised to nail his murderer. So until the same time next week, it's a good night from our panel and our suspects, but remember, the next time you see somebody pick up the phone and collapse, clutching his throat, it's one of two things. CX4, or he's just got his telephone bill. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>